So today we're going to have a quick look at my quad grow and chili grow self-watering planters and I'll take you through the basics of those and we're going to try and make our own DIY version. <laughs> my quad grow and chili grow watering systems. So I've been using that in my greenhouse since 2016 and it is now 2021. So, you know, I've been using this for a long time. And basically, you can see one behind me here. So this is what's called a chili grow, okay? And basically, it's the slightly smaller version. So the quad grow, the chili grow, there is a, oh, there are other, lots of other types. You can go and look them up online. But essentially, this is a seven litre pot and it has this water reservoir. And it's basically how it works is the pot sits on top of the water reservoir and there is a piece of material in there that takes water from the water reservoir up to the plants in the soil. That is essentially it. It is that simple. Now, the quad grow is a bigger system. This is designed for growing kind of chilies, uh, smaller plants. I use it for herbs, that kind of thing. I'm going to show you the quad grow now. So again, it is exactly the same, just bigger. And this is how I grow my bell peppers, sweet peppers and my tomatoes. Four pots. These are much, much bigger as you can see, but so is the reservoir that's underneath. This reservoir holds 30 litres. Um, and again, it's the same idea. The water is in the reservoir. There is a piece of material that pulls the water from the reservoir up to the plant in the pots. and. That's how the plants get all the nutrition as well in this system. We just said 2016 I got this, so this is the older design. They have actually changed the design quite a bit, but it is the same system. So all they've done is change how it looks, but it works in exactly the same way. So I need to put up my peppers. I'm going to do that outside because there's just no space in here at the minute. So believe it or not, I've got all three of my watering systems right here. We've got the quad grow, and I mentioned how they've changed the design of it, the, the aesthetics of the design rather than how it works. So this is the new version. I've got a chili grow, so you can see here it's just a smaller version, and this is one of my homemade watering kind of bed ideas. It's just a tray. I've got a little platform in there and a bit of material to act as the wicking agent that brings the water up. And the pots all have holes in the bottom, so the soil from the pots is in contact with that material. That's it, it's dead simple. So um, I'm going to start getting these peppers transferred into the quad grows now for the greenhouse. Um, I'm not going to take you through this as a, a tutorial because I've done so many videos already. But one thing I'm going to mention, because I haven't mentioned it before, and I've had a lot of questions, how this works is the quad grows with this big water reservoir that's underneath. The plant gets all of its water and its feed from that reservoir. So the potting mix that I use in here is just whatever I've got left over. It's just really nothing fancy in it at all. I don't worry about how good quality it is. I just want something that's quite dry, quite draining. Um, so I don't particularly make a mix for this and I absolutely do not buy fancy mixes for this kind of thing at all. That's it. Okay, so the one thing I need that I forgot to bring out is my material. So when you buy these systems, these quad grow systems, they come with little pieces of material called Wiccan material and um, basically it's designed to really pull the water up really quickly um, and it comes with one for each pot. Over the years mines have got worn out and just trashed or with your tomato plants you'll find that the plant roots grow through the material um, so you can buy new versions of them from the companies that sell the quad grows but as you can imagine that's going to get quite expensive over the years so all I do is I just cut a big bit of material and replace it myself every year. And this is the same material that I use in my uh, watering beds that I make.
Now, one of the things I keep getting asked about with the new quad grow system, because it comes with these two separate reservoirs, is can you separate them out because it is designed to be held together with this tube in the centre. So those two reservoirs actually are one because this tube lets them share. Now, yes, technically you could plug the holes and separate them, but the people who supplied the quad grow to me have asked me not to talk about that because it's not how they're designed to be used. So technically, no, they're designed to be one system for four pots using this. Um, but that is the quad grow system. The chili grow is exactly the same. So as you can see, it's exactly the same system, it's just smaller. You've got the reservoir on the bottom, there's a hole that you pour your water and your feed into. The pots have holes in them that you then feed your wicking matting through and it draws the water and feed up to the plants. It's exactly the same concept as with these. Here is the thing, all these years on, Looking back, if I had known now what I knew then, I wouldn't have bought this. And not because I don't think they're good, I do. I think these are fantastic, which is why I still use them. But it does mean that I've got to store all of this stuff all of the time. And when I'm not using them in winter, it can be quite difficult storing. You can, I've learned now, make these yourself very easily. Um, and that's what I would do if I had that option. So that was the shop bought version, the quad grow. Can I make my own kind of self-watering planter idea using just what I've got around, okay? So this was my thing. Um, I've seen it online and they're using, especially in the States, you guys seem to have access to these massive big buckets with lids and all that kind of stuff. I don't have that, so I'm going with what I've just got in the garden, in the shed, in the greenhouse just now. And I'm going to see if I can recreate this, but I'm also going to do it specifically like the quad grow. So I mentioned that how the quad grows work is there is a reservoir for the water. There's a pot on top of it, the plants in that pot, but the bit that gets the water to the plant is something that is a wick that pulls the water up or draws the water up. Um, usually it's the wicking material that you can buy, but I've seen online people just use t-shirts and things. So basically I'm going to have a go and I had a rake in the shed and I've got a couple of these really attractive orange buckets. Um, I've got some old PVC pipe. Um, I need something to be a platform because I need, if I put the buckets like that, I need something to hold the top bucket up to make space for a water reservoir. So I thought a couple of flower pots. So yeah, that sort of idea. Uh, maybe I might go a bit smaller, we'll see. Um, I'll use the pipe. I'll put that through so that's the thing that I can use to then put water into the reservoir a black plastic bag because the one thing I know about the quad grows is they're completely covered because if the water, ha if you can get air and sunlight and stuff on the water, you risk it getting algae and things in it. So I know there's going to be a gap in the bucket there. So I'm thinking I'll use the black polythene as a way to cover that over. This is all theoretical. <laughs> we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'm going to need a saw and a drill because I'm going to need to put two holes in this bucket. One is for this pipe to go through so that I can put water in and the other one will be for the material I'm going to use as a wick so that it can sit in the water reservoir and come up into the pot. Here goes. Okay, so pipe. So I've got my length of pipe. One end I have cut on a diagonal and I'll explain that in a little bit. Next thing I need to do is make a hole in the top bucket for the pipe and one in the centre that'll hold the wick. Go with the biggest drill bit I've got but it's going to take 
a bit of work. If you have one that's the right size, it would be awesome, but I don't. One bucket with two very untidy holes in it. I'm going to use this as the platform to hold the bucket but when that sits it's going to create a sealed area that I don't want because I want the water to be able to move around so I'm just going to put a few holes in this and yes using the drill for that is total overkill but it's speed it's fast so I've just done some random holes around the side That is essentially how it's going to work. So I mentioned that I cut the water pipe on an angle on one end. It's because when you put it in the bucket, if you put it in with the flat end down, that will touch the bottom and it will create a seal and it will stop the water. You want it that way around so it doesn't get blocked. I had to go and grab some of the material and I need a sacrificial plant so that we can test if this works. And I've got a spare pepper plant. Now, I have some of this wick material um, because I use it already, so I already have it. You do not have to go and buy this. I've seen this done online where people are just using old cotton t-shirts. So you could give this a try with whatever you've got available. So that's kind of the point. This is about just doing something with what we have to hand. Okay, essentially, it's not pretty, you know, this is DIY with what we've got. So, I mean, I'm not going to choose bright orange, but it's what I've got. Um, but that's essentially it. So I've got my water reservoir. I've got my bucket on top that's going to be the big pot for my plant. So it's a pepper, so it needs to be a big pot. I've got the tube here, which is my way of getting water into the reservoir. And I've got material to act as the wick in the centre. Now the one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hole in this bucket that's going to be the overflow because I don't want to fill this with too much water. I'm not going to be able to see. So I need a wee overflow hole so that it'll let water out and let me know I've filled it too far. So... So the last thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this bin liner because I said that I don't want the air and the light to get in around where there's a gap between the buckets. So I'm just going to use this to make a kind of black collar that will cover it, that's all. Nothing fancy. One very unattractive self-watering bucket. Let's get it planted. Okay, last thing then, I just have to give this a really good water in. And like I said, we call this the sacrificial plant because if this doesn't work, I'm not going to lose one of my really important plants. This was a spare. Now, you might be saying, but Eli, if the water's coming from the bottom, why are you watering the the soil so well you always start off giving it a really good soak because you want that um capillary matting or t-shirt material whatever it is you're using you want that to get a good soak because that will then kick everything into action so the plants can get the moisture they need and what have you okay so the overflow holes there And there we go. 
so today we've had a bit of a look at the proper official quad grows and how they work and then we've made our own very cheap very dirty version and it's a case of just seeing if this little plant thrives <sighs> right i will get this into the greenhouse it's ugly